Has anybody ever seen high right and low left? Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's been a little while, I've been on vacation, enjoying my family time away from the golf course. Now we're back and I've got some of the best tips for taking the golf club away from the golf ball to start your swing. I know a lot of you checked out the video from England and it's been that long since I've had a golf club in my hand. So we're back today in the sim room at Travis Point and we're gonna talk about taking the golf club away and making the best backswing. Let's talk a little bit about how to get the right feel for this backswing move. Synchronizing wrist hinge with forearm rotation right here with body and trunk rotation. These three things happen together and they have to happen in pretty much the same order to make sure that we're getting as efficient as we can be. The kind of things I see for players is First, it's the player who doesn't turn their body, but rotates their forearms, which is a key part of making the backswing. Body is pretty static, arms rotate to get the club moving. So now my body is still facing the golf ball and the club is now stuck behind me and the club face is very open. So what do we do from there? I have two options. I stay stuck behind me and then I've got to really flip it at the bottom or I'm so far in here that I have to reroute the club and start sending the club back more over to the top or from the outside to get back to that golf ball. Either one of those options is gonna reduce our efficiency significantly. One of the most common things I see with players in their takeaway is the players use the second key part of the backswing, which is wrist hinge. So these players, again, they don't turn necessarily very much, but they really get the club hinged up into the air. I've created such a steep plane here that I have to do one of two things. I can reroute the club, and you'll see a lot of really good players lay the shaft down, we call it, where they transition and the shaft shallows out. The players that I see and the players that you might be are the ones that get the club very steep, getting that wrist hinge set early, and now we're just operating with a very steep path most likely coming from the outside. So what does a player do when they're steep and from the outside? Their body has to create space that the wrist hinge has nullified. So I'm coming in steeply, my body goes up. When my body goes up, folks, the rotation's done. And when the rotation's done, power is reduced, efficiency massively reduced. And then the last player, that I see most commonly. They use the third element of the, the backswing, which is the rotation of your body. These players turn their trunk very flat, and that gets the club really far behind them, similar to where they just use their forearms. This player doesn't use their arms at all and just takes their trunk and really has a flat shoulder turn that gets the club, once again, stuck way behind them. Whether you're that player or you're the player who doesn't turn their trunk, and lets their arms rotate back here, these players are both gonna suffer the same thing. A massive reroute is needed, or I work so far from the inside that I've really gotta time the rotation of my forearms to square that club face up. I wanna share with all of you my number one drill for feeling how the arms and the body work together to create this backswing takeaway move that'll actually carry itself through the entire swing. I call this the tabletop drill. Imagining that you're sitting in the middle of a huge round table and there's a hole cut out in the middle and you're right in the middle of this table. So this table is gonna be, I'm gonna say it's about waist high. Here's my, my belt right here. I just wanna imagine that I have this table all the way around my body. And I'm gonna start with my club resting on that table. So what I wanna do with this drill is, I wanna feel like I'm keeping the shaft flat on the table. moving through moving of my, my trunk and my chest. A lot of players ask, how do I get the club started? And we've identified some things that people do to do that. They're all trying to move the club head. And one of my favorite things for players to think of is the club head moves because this moves. Think of this and this, my sternum, my chest, having a direct relationship with one another. I start this moving by turning my trunk. 
Well, by the time I get the handle about over top of my trail leg, my right leg, I'm at a point now where something's got to start to be added to this to keep this on the table. So we've got to interject forearm rotation and hinging simultaneously. And what happens as we start to turn, get to my right leg, now I start to rotate my forearms. Now I got to the point my forearms have rotated and I can't go any further with the club head. Now I have to start to hinge. And now I've got the club directly behind my body. And the whole time it stayed on this tabletop. And now I do the same thing on the other side of my body. Rotate my arms, rotate my trunk, and let my wrist hinge. You'll see now I've taken this club back around behind me again. So we have this big arc around our body that this travels on because we combine trunk rotation with forearm rotation with wrist hinge. Do this tabletop drill every day if you'd like to to learn this sensation because once we do this, all I do now is to take a perpendicular axis and I tilt it. And now my entire tabletop is this big plane around my body. Turn and rotate my shoulders and then I rotate my forearms and then I hinge the club. I'm going to find myself in a pretty solid position at the top of my back. And what are some things that we can do to make sure we're doing it correctly? So we've talked about the tabletop drill and how that gets our arms body and wrist to work together. So if I start like I would normally right here, nicely balanced, and I start to turn and rotate my trunk, when I get to the quarter position or where the shaft is parallel to the ground, you'll see the club face here is about the same angle as my spine. I will start to let my wrist hinge as my arms finish their rotation. So you'll see at this position, the handle is pointing down toward the target line where the golf ball is at. Target line's right here. One of the best ways you can help identify this, folks, take your club, grip it right in the middle of it. Set up and make your backswing. And you want this shaft and grip to be pointing down on top of this target line. If you have a mirror at home, then you can just very simply make your backswing look at the mirror and see if you've created a plane that points you down towards this target line. If you're a player who has been really forearm heavy with your activity, then you're going to see that it's pointing out somewhere in front of your body. If you're a player who is really, really strong with your hinge, you're going to see that it's pointing more down between your foot line and your target line. The identification of where this club is in space relative to the plane in your target line is one of the best things that a player can do independent of a golf ball. You can do some of these drills and use some of these references for the club face and the shaft to make yourself better without having to go to an area where you can go outside into a range. I'm gonna demonstrate how I would take the club away, how we've discussed, and let's see if TrackMan doesn't support that neutrality with numbers that give us a lot more efficiency every time. So here we go. Balance and address. I'm gonna turn my trunk. Handle gets on top of my right leg. I'm gonna feel my arms start to rotate while they hinge. Now from here, you'll see my left arm is pretty much through my, my right shoulder. You'll see the club face pretty much matches the back of my left hand. All very good things to have from a neutral standpoint to be on the correct plane. So from here, what happens if I strike the golf ball? Okay, so you'll see the shot went just fractionally to the right. My path was a little over two degrees from the inside, which I'm happy to play with that every single day, no matter what club's in my bag. The face was basically square to that path. So my path was a little right. The face was just barely right at that path, which is why I hit a little face shot about six or eight feet right in my target. What that demonstrates is that if we follow the steps of the backswing to get ourselves in this neutral position, the downswing is more reactive to that in a way that's very efficient. I want all of you to work on these takeaway sensations, these checkpoints for the plane, do our tabletop drill 
work these into your practice session and comment below. Let me know how it's gone for you because I'd love to hear how it's working for all of you out there. Click on the subscribe below. Please send your comments my way and let me know if the things I'm offering you are helping your game. And we'll see you next week.